So I'm with uh, my good friend Steve. Uh, Steve, you were with uh, you were you uh, you were a personal trainer, right? Yes, I am. And you were, if I'm not mistaken, you were living in Manhattan. I was living in Manhattan. Um, and I, yeah, I, I was living in Manhattan. Yeah. And tell me some of the, I, I believe you had some, uh, if you would call it celebrity clientels, uh, who are some of the celebrities that you, uh, the, some of the people that I trained was like Henry Kissinger, John McEnroe, president Carter's mother, Regis Feldman, Red Fox, Ed Koch, Grace Jones. And it, it was an amazing story because it just came. Everything just came to me all of a sudden. And it just happened. What about, I believe, you, Chuck Norris, Madonna? Chuck Norris and Madonna, yes. How long did you train them for? Some people I trained for months. Some people I trained for weeks. Um, they came into my life and, and I did the best I could and I just trained them and then they eventually left and moved on and came back and moved on. Uh, some people came from California, trained in New York for a while and then, you know, that was it. So you're like the celebrity trainer. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. So let me ask you something. Everybody, you know, I saw the study, all these young people that want to work for celebrities. I think people, I mean, like within us all, we have this desire for recognition. And I think if I'm attached to somebody like that, did it make you feel special? I mean, what makes you feel special in life? I think, honestly, to tell you the truth, when I started to train people, the people had just come to me. And it was an amazing feeling because people gravitated to me and I didn't understand how I was getting these clients. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. why I was getting these clients. Right. And it was like somehow people were just calling and telling other people that I was a great trainer. Right. And I think there was a big problem with that because what happened was that instead of paying attention to who I was, uh -huh. I became something that I wasn't. Interesting. My ego was boosted up uh -huh. and I became, I think it was like the Yitzhahara took over and I became cocky and arrogant. Interesting. And it took me from a spiritual world yeah. to a physical world. Interesting. And I really didn't like it, but what I did was I adapted to where I was and how to overcome some of that situation. Instead of becoming cocky and arrogant, right. I started to become more personal with each individual. And right. as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. I started to train people for who they were right. instead of what they were. Right. Instead of being a big celebrity, Right. I wanted to understand their individual personality, and right. that's what I gravitated to. And I right. became very good friends with them mm -hmm. because I didn't care about who they were. Right. I cared about what they were. Well, that's an amazing lesson, I think, because basically that's the world. There's this kind of myth or mythology, which basically the whole Hollywood is, and what a lot of thing people are making it like makes it look bigger than life, but really they're just, they're just simple people. Everybody's just has a spirit, a soul. And if we understand that basically Madonna is no better than me, Chuck Norris is no better than me because he has a soul and I have a soul and to God, we're just equal. So then we can connect as humans. We can value ourselves. You know, there's a big problem in the world today of young people not valuing themselves. So what would you say to that? I, I, I think that everybody has to look within themselves to uh -huh. find love, to find uh -huh. what, what they are. Yeah. You know, there was an old, old mountain climber and he was chipping around at this mountain. Uh -huh. And he looked down at 
at the, he looked down and he saw this king in right. this carriage. And he turned around and he said, that must be the most powerful thing in the world. Right. And poof, he became the king. Uh -huh. And as he was in the carriage, mm -hmm. the sun was beating down on him. And he was so uncomfortable in the carriage. So he said, the sun must be the most powerful thing in the world. So poof, he became the sun. And he was so hot and he would burn forests and cause fires. But there was a problem. There was a cloud that would always block its rays. And he said, that must be the most powerful thing in the world. So all of a sudden, he became the cloud. Wow. And he would drop rain down and cause all kinds of flooding. But there was a problem. He was always getting pushed around by the wind. And the wind was blowing and knocking down trees and causing all kinds of havoc. And it would hit the mountain. And he said, I can't knock down the mountain. So that must be the most powerful thing in the world. So he became the mountain. And as he was the mountain, strong and powerful, he felt this pain in the side of him. And he looked down and he said, what is that? And he said, it was the old mountain climber chipping away at him. So what did he say? He said that mountain climber must be the most powerful thing in the world. So he became the mountain climber again. The most important thing is not to become something else, but to look within ourselves and find happiness. And that's the most important thing in the entire world, is to look inside ourselves instead of becoming something else. Right, right. To love ourselves. Right. So, how do you love yourself and how do you find happiness? It's a great feeling. Because I have five principles in yeah. life. And the first principle is to believe in Hashem. Yeah. And to have not just trust, but have faith. And believe in Him totally. And if you understand Hashem, you Hashem know that... God, right? Right. Yeah. That He loves you. He cares yeah. for you. He's merciful. And yeah. He lives and listens to you. Right. The second thing is to have good health and if you have good health then you're always happy yeah. and if you're always happy then you could appreciate everything in the world and if you appreciate everything in the world then money is the next the next thing but the the thing is that you find happiness because you do good and uh -huh. god only wants two things he wants you to do good and he wants you to be happy and that's i know that i'm loved no matter what happens yeah, yeah. i'm always yeah. loved and i always have a father that always takes care of me i have no complaints about anything and i have no problems about anything right well you remind me of the story of zusha that uh, the magid you're familiar with the story no, tell me the story. So the story goes um, that there was a guy who was looking to be happy. He was a wealthy man, but he didn't, you know, he was looking for the secret to happiness. So he came to the great Magad of Mizrich, the great teacher of the great Sadikim, who took over from uh, the Baal Shem Tev, And he said, oh, you got to meet my student Zusha. He'll teach you. So this wealthy guy goes to this ramshackle little uh, hut. And Zusha was, was dirt poor, he was terribly poor. And, you know, they slept on the bench and they ate on the bench and everything. And he comes and he says, can I be with you? Yeah, and he sees Zusha's very, very happy. So after a couple of days, Zusha says, so tell me, you know, why are you here? So he says, well, the Magid taught, sent me here to learn how to be happy. He says, why did he send you to me? I don't have any problems. So that's the key. When, you're, when your attitude and what you've said is very, very beautiful, which, uh, which I want to conclude with that, which is that if, you know, first of all, I think that concept that if you know you're loved by God, how can you not be happy? If you appreciate life, of course, you have to be healthy and money is important.
But ultimately, what is money for? It's a tool to give, because really, as we know from studies, giving makes you happy. Getting doesn't make you happy. And, and like you said, I think you're 100% right. God wants us to be happy, to be good. I think you figured out the secret to life, man. You know, it's, it's funny because I had, a, I had a rabbi come to my house. And yeah. I, live, I live in a room. Yeah. A room. That's all I live in. And when he walked in, he was talking to me. And, and somewhere during the conversation, he had said, you know, you should live somewhere else. I said, why? He said, you know, he says, if you live in this room, it's a depressing room. And he says, when I live in a place... The nicer the place is, the happier I am. He, should, he said, you should really move. Yeah. And when he walked out, I said to myself, wow, that guy must not be very, very happy if, if that's what he thinks. And then I looked at my room and I said to myself, I'm really happy here. And I could give you 20 or 30 reasons why I'm extremely happy here. And... I, I, he saw something that I never saw. And that's what you were talking about. You, you know, no. You, you, happiness comes from within yourself. And happiness, it's really simple. If you know that God loves you and he's taking care of you and whatever happens is happening because of he loves you and he's teaching you, then there's no reason ever to feel sad, depressed, or anything. I mean, I, I remember seeing a kid, he was about four or five years old, and he jumped into this pool, and his father's back wasn't facing the kid. But the kid jumped in, and the kid jumped in, and he knew that he couldn't swim, but his father was there, and his father was going to take care of him. He didn't have faith. He had trust that his dad was there and nothing was going to happen to him. Right. And that's what I believe. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's absolutely true. That's the, uh, that's what we got to do. And it's on the dollar bill. In God we trust. In God we trust. Exactly, exactly. So any, uh, any concluding thoughts, any good lessons for, for the, for the uh, World Wide Web? God only wants one thing. He wants you to be good and he wants you to be happy. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And Rabbi, what do you suggest? What do you have? Well, um, I feel, you know, the thing that I teach to a lot of people, this is really about you, but, and, and I don't want to like go too far off, but, um, one of the things that I teach to people is the first thought of the day influences your train of thought. So as soon as you wake up, you have to thank God for 10 blessings. And if you do that, and I do that every day, we'll change you. Within two weeks, you'll be a changed person because a lot of us, you know, in the Western world today, we live better than ever in human history. And that's the very same place that more people are depressed and are committing suicide. So something is very wrong. Like you said, happiness is an internal job. So what's wrong? The answer is that we're not practicing gratitude. Our, we are Yehudim, we're Jews. The word Yehuda, Jew, comes from the idea to be grateful. So gratitude is an exercise. You don't, oh, we're all looking for something to happen that will make me happy. No, because then you'll get used to that and then you'll need something else. You need to learn how to be happy with the amazing blessings that you already have. You have eyes, be happy. There's a story of a, of a lady that unfortunately she wanted to commit suicide. So they called the psychiatrist, I don't know, the 20th story in Manhattan where she was living. And he had to speak to her and he realized her life was really miserable. Maybe he would have committed, you know, it was like, what do you say? So he said to her, listen, imagine you didn't have eyes. And now God made a miracle. You can see. How do you feel? She says, I can see. I'm so ecstatic. And that's the point in life is that every, it says in Kabbalah, every one of us, each one of our blessings is more than all of our curses combined. Everybody in the world has blessings and curses. Nobody, nobody has everything perfect. But if you focus on your blessings, if you just remind yourself, especially in the morning, wow, I'm blessed. I have this, I have that, I have this. So you feel lucky. You feel rich. 
what do our Jewish sages say? Who is wealthy? Whoever is happy with what he has. And so let me just take it back to the stars. Do you find that they're happy? Where's, um, how do you see them in relationship to happiness and what causes their happiness, those that are, those that aren't? You know, there's a, there was a Claudia Cohen, and she says, you know, I have to go to therapy. And I said, why? You're in great shape. She says, no, I have to go to marriage counseling. I said, marriage counseling? Yeah. I said, what kind of problems could you ever have? You have billions of dollars. And I thought about it, and I went, wow, she got billions of dollars, and she has a lot of problems. Yeah. And yeah. I have very little, and I have no problems. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I don't know what makes them happy, and I don't know if they're truly happy. I just know as a Jew that if you appreciate everything that you have, and the first thing that I wake up and I say, thank you, God, for giving me back my soul, and then I run and I wash my hands, and then I say the Shema, and I know that I'm going to go daven, and the reason I'm here on this earth or in my little world is to produce goodness and happiness. And as long as I'm helping people and producing something positive, it's not my job to be negative. It's not my job to, if someone does anything bad, for me to reciprocate in a negative way. That's Hashem's way. That's God's. My idea and only my idea is to produce goodness. Well, that's great. That's truly a that's that's truly a beautiful beautiful way, and I hope a lot of people learn from it. And it's um, so so. It's fair to say, from your experience, that being a billionaire or being a star doesn't make you happy. Money doesn't make you happy. Uh -huh. Money never makes anybody happy. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that you're loved makes everybody happy. <laughs> knowing that someone takes care of you yeah. makes you happy. Right, right. And right. being aware that all the things that come to you doesn't yeah. come to you by accident. Yeah. It's, it comes to you because it's supplied to you to continue on your journey. Right, right, right. right. Nice, nice. I remember when, when you... When you, when you, the first time I met you, and then we, we came and we did, we did the prayers together. Yeah. And I said, wow, isn't that amazing? That's why you entered into my life. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Everything is appreciated. Appreciate nice. everything that you have. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I want to conclude with giving you a blessing that this little video which I think is small in length, but deep and meaningful and very, very um, inspirational to those who are seeking to be inspired, should tra traverse into people's hearts and really uplift people and give them a technique. Because I think, in a way, it's all been summed up here. I mean, of course, there's Torah, there's mitzvahs, but in terms of the kernel of truth, Certainly, if you're a Gentile, I think it's all here. You just got to kind of trust, it's more than faith, trust that God's got your back and you're on a journey and you're here to spread light. And so what else matters? <laughs> That's the best stuff. And, 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 and it doesn't just apply to Jews. It applies yeah. to everybody. Right. Just for good. That's yeah. what God wants is yeah. just to us to do good yeah right right okay any concluding uh, remarks thank you so much for sharing okay Steve as they say in the classics sei gesund und stark be well and healthy 
And we're going to uh, reconvene, please, God. And I'm going to try to uh, work on editing this a little bit. I put up a wonderful, a wonderful, meaningful video. And for those who, who watch it, I'm sure they thank you for taking your time and taking your heart and spreading some, some, some light into uh, uplifting people. Thank you. Sh okay. Bye. Okay.